first off, I'd like to thank uh, Jason Brunk. He's um, sponsored us and given us some hosting. So we've now migrated to Blue Flame Consulting, which is a hosting company, which is much faster than Web Hosting Pad and a much better uptime. So thanks very much. He goes of the name of Cranky Coder on YouTube, and he's got a lot of great videos, and he's a smart bloke and he does a lot of good work and I've sent him up uh, one of my very first uh, eight times charger boards and he's been tinkering away with it and he's helping me out so he's a great bloke also like to thank um, Dennis Crooms for his donation via PayPal and also Chris Butters which he has a YouTube channel as well and thanks guys keeping the keeping the project live and we're gonna keep trying to move forward and make it better okay guys today is just a quick update on the code we're doing for the new nano 4x18650 charger discharger battery tester here we go so this time it's been broken down into two separate uh, uh, different sketches so one will run on the Nano, it's a Adreno Nano, and the other one will run on the ESP8266. And they've got different, instead of using the um, the Wi-Fi on the Nano, which which actually um, completely runs out of um, storage and memory on the Nano, I've written two separate sketches and they talk to each other for a, a software serial and I'm outputting diagnostics on the Nano through its hardware serial. I had to be a lot more efficient with my coding for the memory because the Adreno Nano has a lot less memory than the, um, the Adreno Mega, which runs on the 8x charger, but it's much cheaper. And we've got there. Code's working at the moment. I haven't finalized it, so once I finalize it and it's been fully tested, I will put it up on GitHub. So let's just run through what we got here. So a lot less libraries this time. We've got the wire, one wire, and that's for the Dallas temperature sensor here. So these three here, that's for the Dallas temperature sensor. Liquid crystal, which is the I2C protocol, which talks to the 16 by two liquid crystal display with two, two pins only. And we got the software serial, which I'm using to communicate with the Arduino um, Nano to the ESP8266. So here we go. Here's the 74HC595 8-bit shift register. That's got three pins there. The latch, clock, and data. That's what it uses to send. So it uses three pins, and that means we shift out eight pins. So we going from 3 to 8 so we'll get a gain of 5 extra digital pins and on the MUX which is a multiplexer we're using 4 pins plus 1 signal for the analog and I'm using a single pin for the button so it's a momentary press switch so and there's no rotary encoder on this one and we are not using any libraries and another change I've done on this from the 8 times mega charger is I'm using uh, struct so we, we're defining that as for the variables which will change and down here we're just defining the pins here this is for the uh, mux the multiplexer and that's just the outputs so we're def predefining the pins and the and the um, 4-bit binary to select each individual channel and doing the same here with the shift multiplexer telling which one's which okay here's the constant variables I've changed the shunt resistor to an array instead of just a single variable so you be able to test each individual load resistor, shunt resistor, whatever you want to call it, and 
you can um, adjust them each individually so you get more of an accurate output. This is stay the same, you've got your reference voltage, and you can still change your cutoff voltage, the rest time, the milliamps, flag for low, faulty, high milliamps, flag for anything over 500 is faulty. Uh, you can tune the offset of ohms for the milliohms. Charge and timeout is eight hours. Uh, still haven't coded anything for the warning, but I've left it in there so we can do something on that later. Max temperature threshold. So if it goes out, if it from initial temperature to the current temperature is 10 degrees over Celsius, it'll consider it faulty. Bat battery leak voltage offset to half a volt. So if there's no battery inserted and the analog rating is under half a volt. It will be undetected. Anything over that will be de detected. I haven't fully tested with a very low voltage cell yet because there's still the gate for the reverse polarity protection. There's the gate needs a certain voltage to be able to turn it on. But we'll, we'll get we'll test that later. And it's four seconds per LCD screen time. Here's the array for the uh, Dallas temperature sensors. I ran the same code, I just changed it to five devices instead of uh, nine, which was on the Mega. Right, here's the setup. We're just setting up the shift register, then we set up the multiplexer pin outputs, set up the button. There's a the screen. Okay, then we just looped through all the um, all the modules, so we have four modules here for a 4i loop, and this just turns on and off each charge TP5100, and then it reads it, and that will engage the pull down uh, resistor, and that should drop them down to zero. Because if I don't run this, they'll they'll have um, a, like a floating voltage, and then they'll come up as detectors straight away. It's just like a pre thing just to clear the voltage on the charge pins. There we go. And we're initializing the serial. This is the one for output on the nano. And this one here is to, to talk to send receive data to the ESP8266 to send the statistics and the data up into the internet that links up to the battery portal database. Okay. Here's a loop. Instead of using that timer library, I've just basically created a simple mills count and it just cycles through. This one does serial read, so this doesn't actually work off a timer. It just, if it's ready to read, it'll read this first. And that would be reading the reply from the ESP8266. So this, every two mills, it will check if the button's been pressed. And here it just does the cycle state. This cycles for each module and checks voltages, does what it needs to do. Right at the end, it displays the LCD output. Send serial function here. It's the read serial function here. It's the button function. Later on, I will put a long press in there possibly, just so we can do a little bit more manipulate um, in different inputs. Here's a cycle state. This controls LCD output. If you press the button, it'll pop up of lock mode one minute for one second, and then it'll stay on that screen for one minute. That's all the button currently does. And if you press it again, it'll stay for the reset the one minute counter, and then it will go to the next screen. Scrolling down, just initializing variables. So every time the cycle's finished, and then you pull the battery out, it takes the batteries out, you put a new battery in, this will reinitialize all the variables. This is the cycle state, this is where all the, it's the check voltage, the battery. So once you input the battery from in the portal now, not through a barcode scanner, it will continue. Then it will charge the battery, do its tests, check voltage and timeout periods, check the TP5100 is turned from red to blue, which means from charging to finished. It'll check the milliohms, rest the battery if 
the battery is charged longer than one minute. Discharge the battery, check for temperature, uh, check for the cutoff voltage, make sure it's it's above 2.8 or whatever it's set to. Here's recharge battery, which is exactly the same as charge battery. And it's also posting data and statistics to the web page. We'll show that in the next video. Also, the same thing. And then it'll, if anyone fails, it will skip to the completed and it will say if it's faulty or whatnot. And here's the, the cycle state for the um, LCD output. Because there's such little RAM on the Adreno Nano, I've had to be a little bit clever and for fixed string values, instead of storing them in memory, I've actually stored them onto the flash memory, which is a lot more optimal. So I've just done sprint F underscore capital P and using PT, uh, PSTR, and that will store certain strings and empty characters and all that sort of stuff in, in the flash memory instead of the running memory which will crash if you have too much or won't compile because it's over too much memory on the mega didn't have any of these problems i will do this because it, you want to have as much memory as you can um just had to be a bit didn't have to be so um well you can, you can be a lot more lazy on the mega with your coding because you've got so much more memory than a nano. And down here, this is just the individual um, running cycles. So there's a discharge, we've got the milliohms check, we've got the charge cycle, which is just reading uh, the multiplexer on the charge pin and make sure it's if it's um, greater or equal to 1.2 volts, it means that that pin is turned on and the charging has finished. This is checks temperature. Just a quick one there. This gets the temperature. And this will check the voltage on the battery. And this will switch the um, shift register. And this is the multiplexer. And these are return codes. So these are predefined return codes from the from the ESP8266. So it's actually sending an integer. And the integer is I've mapped out the integers, and each one says integer zero is successful, one's error, connection error, two is timeout, and so forth. And then we go up to here, so barcode continue. If this 100 get, comes back from the ESP8266, it says continue, the barcode's been scanned, you, you may continue to the charge cycle, and it just says 100, so I'll basically just prefixed 10, then we've got 0, so module 0, module 1, module 2, module 3. So we count from 0, 1, 2, 3, which is 4 modules. I left this commented out, so this can be adapted for the 8x charger, and insert data successful, so basically if it's inserting charge records now, or if it's inserting discharge records, or fault codes, it'll wait until it gets this insert data successful flag which is for in each individual module just like the battery barcode continue it will keep trying until that actually happens i may set it like a timeout and flag something on the lcd screen saying network not not connected if, if it doesn't x amount of times possibly we'll get to that roadblock later and just got a default one unknown and that's, that's pretty all the nano code for now. So it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. I've had to cut a lot of variables out. I've reused a lot of variables. Because memory is definitely a limitation on these nanos. Even storage. So I had to be a bit more careful, a bit more efficient in my coding. And I will rewrite this into the 8 times mega one. And then that will be more efficient and that will be a bit cleaner. There's a lot, lot of a lot of changes been in here and that's quite promising. Okay, here's what the this is quite simple on the ESP. It's just running an Adreno sketch on there. I may consider a different method for this for the SSID and the password. Boy, this would be your Wi-Fi. I may actually do a serial 
import or may have the nano send the values from there but you would need to program this separately and I've got a little um, USB ESP8266 programmer which is, you only need one but you definitely need it I think unless you want to do a lot of jumpers on a breadboard with a, a, a USB to serial converter which I don't recommend doing all right so this is pretty simple it's just got one include library which is the ESP and it's got for, basically that's it's, it's Adreno equivalent and this can do Wi-Fi direct so basically this is running separate and it's talking to the database and all it's doing is pretty simple it connects to your Wi-Fi AP and it just loops through it goes yeah if it needs it, it if it receives serial so basically it's reading serial from its hardware serial which has been sent by the, the nano and it, the nano sends like a whole string and then once it receives that string it sends it to the server and it does a PHP get and then the battery port will read that data interpolate it and then send an a integer response so a set response so the only values that this will be responding to the nano is one which if you scroll down the bottom here one is connection error and two is timeout so I've got a two second timeout which is 2000 milliseconds so 2000 milliseconds is a timeout and it'll just return timeout which happens quite a bit but that's, that's fine and it'll just retry but even though you never know that data might have actually sent but just didn't get reply in time but I found if you don't do this I remember on, on the Ethernet it'll stay there for at least an hour or so and it'll just well more than that it'll just lock up and then the whole code will just get stuck in a endless loop and it wouldn't continue All right so that's pretty well sums up the code and there we go thanks for watching guys I'll soon will post a video of me actually using the nano and showing the, the portal side got some really cool stuff to show you and I'll catch you on the next video thanks very much thanks for watching bye